Morning all. I want to start by telling you a story um, about, about a terrorist incident that never happened. And the reason that I kind of um, discovered this incident or found out about it was because uh, it happened in my hometown, the town where I was born. So I was reading the paper and I read about this couple who had the police come around to their home and they were arrested because they had bomb making equipment in their garden. And I don't know if they were planning a suicide attack as such or a bomb attack, but the, the, the plot was thankfully um, foiled by the police. But the thing that really caught my attention about that case was the fact that there was this kind of inquest afterwards about where this couple had been radicalized. Uh, you know, was it in the local community, etc., etc. But the local community came out and said, we don't actually know who these people are. And it turns out that they self-radicalized online. So the title of this video is Why I Make Content. So let's, let's try and connect the dots here. It seems to me that what happened with these people was that they were watching content. They were watching online content. Could be on YouTube, could be on another video sharing platform. And as a result of watching that content, they decided that it was worth risking their lives or maybe dedicating their lives or if they were, um, if they were gonna give their own lives up for their cause. But the point being, that you can self-radicalize online. And if you can self-radicalize online, you can self-actualize online. Now that might seem like a very trite kind of comparison between those two things. It's not meant to be at all. It's simply an illustration of how powerful online video can be. And I learned this power, or I came into contact with this power, when I was um, self, when, when, when I spontaneously self-actualized online, in fact. So the story was that I was in a very difficult period of my life. Uh, I got into a period of my life where, I'm normally, I'm normally quite good at dealing with stress, but on this particular period of my life, there were just too many things going on. I was just, I was just too stressed out. There were, I couldn't really, you know, there were too many things going on that I couldn't control. And, you know, being a coach, I had various modalities that I was used to working with, with other people and not with myself. I've been reading personal development for a long, long time, but even I was in the situation where I just didn't, I didn't know how to handle this, didn't know what I was gonna do. So I was looking, I was looking around and I was on YouTube and I was um, looking for what it is that was gonna help. So in the end, I came across a video interview from a wonderful coach called Mark Howard, a wonderful three principles practitioner. And um, he was being interviewed and there was a very short part of the interview. The clip couldn't have lasted more than 30 seconds. And uh, this 30 seconds changed the course of my life. So Mark Howard was being asked about how he works with clients, with the, the three principles. And he said, I was working with a client and my client came to me and said, Mark, you know, um, I've realized after our session uh, last week that those difficult thoughts that I was thinking, I don't have to think those thoughts. And it could have been another part of the video, but it just happened to be that particular phrase. And that phrase affected me, that changed me, that helped me to self-actualize. Because for the first time, I had what in the three principles world we might call an insight. And an insight is simply an experience of your own thinking that allows you to become the observer of your own thinking and to instinctively understand that you are not your thinking. And I had spent most of my time, particularly in that period of worry, uh, identifying very much with my own thinking. And this was the first time I was able to zoom out and it 
changed the course of my life. It made the particular experience I was having at that point much more easy to handle. And it allowed me to find a modality that worked with other people that I could and wanted to um, spread. So in my previous business as an educational consultant, um, I wrote books. I wrote books on managing behavior in the classroom, for example. And um, one book I self-published and one book was published by an educational publisher. And I felt very, very proud of myself. And I talked to people about my book and other people, oh, you've written a book, it's amazing, fabulous. And I, and I know from my own experience and from talking to other people that you know, people who buy books don't necessarily read them all. They might read, I don't know, a third if you're lucky and then sort of put it down. That's certainly how, that's certainly how I work. If you pick it up again later, then that's a bonus. And the, the publisher sends me details of how many copies have been sold, etc., etc. And I know that one online video can reach thousands of people. And I know that one 30 second clip of one online video can change somebody's mindset completely. I'm not knocking writing books and I'm not knocking, um, I'm not knocking reading either. I mean, I, you know, I write blog posts and I'm gonna link a blog post underneath this video. But the point, the point about it really, the reason that I started making video content is precisely that. It's a very, very powerful medium. Um, and it's something that I intend to continue with. So if this little message res resonated with you, um, you might consider giving a little like on the video. You might even consider commenting and tell me, you know, how, how it's affected you. Um, as I said, I've written a blog post about a similar subject and I'll link it underneath and I'll see you on the next video.